we are going to add a background to text that is in line instead of having boxes hidden behind all of our text elements. So the best way to do that, um, I have a sentence here I want to call out. I'm going to use a character style to help me create an inline text element for this project. To do that, go to type character styles and I'm going to hit this create new style button. Now it created character style one. I'm going to double click on this and change the name to background color. And I'm going to name it background color body since it's in the body text. My basic character format, I'm going to add an underline. So what we're basically going to do is create a large underline to lay behind the text element. And that will serve as a background for that text element. So once I've added the underline, I'm going to go to underline options, make sure it's on still. And I'm going to set the weight to something similar to my font size. Uh, we have a 12 font. Let's put it up to 14. And then I'm actually going to offset it with a negative offset. And you can see here this white box is representing my underline now, which is a 14 point underline offset four points to create uh, this effect. Now it does lay behind the text element. I'm going to select solid and we're going to give it a color. I'm going to drop the tint so it's not too bright. And I'm going to hit OK so we can preview. So now what I have is a character style that creates a background that I can apply to all different parts of my paragraph here. So using my character style menu, I can select that to apply it. I could also select text. Use my eyedropper tool to select that character style and apply this to any body copy that's similar to this font construction. Now, if I wanted to apply it to this H1, this heading, I would want to probably create a new character style that applies to this larger weight and larger size text. That way you can organize your project with different character styles. Now, sometimes you may want to apply a background that's not going to give you enough contrast with the font. Let me show you. So here I'll select a sentence that I would want to call out. I'm going to go to character styles and I'm going to create a new character style. I'm going to name it background dark body. And that's going to be a dark background. I'm going to select my underline again and in my options, keep the same settings, 14 point minus four point for my offset. But this time, let's choose a darker color like this purple. And if I hit preview, this sentence is no longer legible because of the lack of contrast between our black text and our purple background. So at any, any time I can change this character style by double clicking on it. Uh, I can actually change the character color that lies within this style to let's say a white, and then that generates much better contrast. And I can apply this throughout the document with my eyedropper tool or by selecting that character style in my menu or in my properties. Now this is where character styles become even more powerful. Let's say you're reviewing your document and your project and this purple is just not doing it for you or your client. So again, I can go into my character style and say, okay, the background, we actually want it to be this red, very imposing, uh, maybe a warning. And 
with it, we felt that the character weight wasn't enough. So I can come into my basic character formats and actually increase to, let's say, a bold for the highest contrast. And it's going to change every character style that I have within my document. So uh, the power of this versus having text box and shape box laid behind elements is really in the fact that it's scalable and uh, workable as you move forward with your project.